Because she throws it through the fucking window. Like, legit through the full fucking window. So, and like, that's not her home. No. The dad, he's just like, uh, you know, why don't you uh, take the rest of the day off? She sits there in silence for a good minute. And then she says, full pay. No, bitch, I'm not giving you full pay. You grab the fucking window. <laughs> Let me tell you how it's about to go. Let me show you the towel you're about to throw. This is hip hop, try to run in our house, we'll knock your ass straight out the door. I'm the enemy's epitome, the fantasy, my tendency to mentally give your career the death penalty. I instantly advise you to match my intensity, try to fit my brain like Jackie Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so tired of the why not start up putting MCs in a pine box, you motherfuckers couldn't even hit me in my box. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Lost the TV, and we are. Ready at MC. And I'm right. And I'm James. Episode two. I know what you did last summer. If uh, you watched the last one again, we're doing spoilers and everything. So if you haven't seen it, go watch the second episode. It is on Prime. Basically, we pick up. Directly where the first one left off. Yeah. Lennon is freaking out. And she goes to talk to her dad. And then they see blood splatter on the window. And then something gets thrown through the window. And if you remember correctly from the last episode... We talked about one character who was very odd. I believe her name's, yeah, I'm pretty sure her name's Courtney. Yeah. Tall, kind of beefy, person yeah. you want to fuck with. Apparently there was this cr creature, I don't know if it was a possum or what. It was an animal that had been like getting into shit or whatever, ruining some shit. And she's just so odd when she does this. And it comes off very creepy. <laughs> and it yeah. freaks Linda now. She's like... What's wrong with you? Like, I don't know, I just thought you might have been a serial killer? Because she throws it through the fucking window. Like, legit through the full fucking window. So, and like, that's not her home. No. You a bitch. You know why you a bitch? Because I said so. You just a bitchy bitch. You a bitch and McBitcherson. You a bitch McBitch. You, I go to McDonald's and get a McBitch because you a bitch. Bitch. The dad, he's just like, uh, you know, why don't you uh, take the rest of the day off? She sits there in silence for a good minute. Then she says, full pay. No, bitch, I'm not giving you full pay. You grab the fucking window. And then Lennon is basically like, she's going to try and meet up with the group of friends, which we didn't see what they look like now in the first episode. They're supposed to go meet up. Because this is a year later, by the way. They're, they decide to meet up at this gym where she's going to show them the picture of what she had in her closet. Yep. And the whole gang shows up. I mean, you have uh, Lennon calls... Margo's there first, mm -hmm. and then Riley. Uh, Dylan does not go. Nope. Johnny shows up. Mm -hmm. Well, he shows up with his, uh, his boyfriend. Yeah, which is Coach Kraft. So they have a conversation. They have a little bit of introduction with each other, like, hey, how you been? Blah, blah, blah. But they really don't waste no, no time about, hey, then it says, we have a problem. Somebody knows what we did last summer. Shows in the picture. First, they play it off. It was like, well, you probably did a lot of shit last summer. Yeah. And a lot of people. Because it's not really the winner, it's Allison. But, but she has to play that role. So. Yeah. But they're like, you know what? Like, we can't turn on each other. So go from here. Let's just figure it out. They all leave. They go in their separate ways. Margo follows Johnny. And she apologizes because apparently she went crazy when he decided he wasn't going to USC with her. Yeah. Patched it up or whatever. They're all good now. She's apparently really turned on by the fact that Johnny is with Coach Kraft or right. Eric or whatever. She keeps calling Coach Kraft, which, again, I think she just wants to fuck Johnny. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, they, they do another reveal. We find out that... In the flashback. In the flashback to the night that the accident happened when Lennon hit Allison. So Allison goes home. Uh, she explains what happens. To her and dad. Yeah, to, to her father. I'm pretty sure her father's name is Bruce. And instead of calling the police or doing the right thing, the dad basically instructs Allison to be Lennon from this point on. Like, even when it's just them, like, they have, like, a, he'll walk up on us like, hey, Allison, she'll turn around. He's like, hey, you can't do that. No, you can't respond to that. You're Lennon now. Um, there's a few scenes throughout the episode where she's, like, talking to people. He's like, hey, you got to be more careful. You got to you gotta get that. That outgoing vibe yeah. of your sister. You can't be that reserved, Allison. Mm -hmm. And he points out multiple times that, hey, your sister did not smoke. But Allison still smokes. She doesn't anymore. Lynn goes to see Dylan. She's just trying to tell him what happened. Runs into, I want to say his sister or something in that situation. Like, it's her house. Maybe, her, maybe his mom. She looked young, but it could have been his mom. They had a conversation about Allison's death. 
And she's like, you looking for Dylan? So you cut to Dylan, who's in the backyard, hammering poles into the fucking ground. She walks up to him. As soon as she says, hey, Dylan, how you doing? All he does, he turns around and looks at her with the, like, the most stern face ever. He's like, what do you want, man? Like, yeah. What do you want? Yeah, so she tells him like straight up, like, I think somebody knows what happened. And he's like, yep. Like, he looks at it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's all the dialogue. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, like, they start talking about it. He's like, it's karma. That's calm. It's odd behavior, but in a way, at least I get it. So I, I get it right. I can respect Dylan's attitude to the situation. Oh, we didn't even mention the fact that in the gym they said that Dylan hasn't talked to him since that night. Yeah, no, he hasn't like, talked to him. And Riley is adamant that they're best friends. So she leaves, and she's getting followed by this black truck. She sees it a lot throughout mm-hmm. the first episode. And like at one point, she just parks, and like it stops on the side of the road in view where she can see it. Just sits there for a minute, and then just goes away. And she pulls up at her restaurant, and Riley thinks she's acting weird. But Riley's there to help her clean the goat head and blood out of her closet. And as much as the dad knows, uh, she doesn't mention the fact that somebody put a fucking goat head in the closet. Yeah, I, this is uh, very odd. I would have definitely said something about that. Her dad's putting up a camera yeah. on the side of the house. Courtney's weirded out by seeing Johnny there, which I don't understand why. He goes and talks to Lennon. They have a cigarette. He's like, I don't I know you smoked, which is why the dad came up and said something. Margo wanted this ha- in the situation to happen the way it does. She's in her bathtub and her mom is like video recording her for like social media. Her mom really supports her social media shit. Yeah. Johnny's there just sitting with her while she's like naked in the tub. Apparently she, she got like into mukbangs and started eating a lot of food and shit and her mom, the shit made her go crazy or whatever so she started eating a lot more. Yeah, she had to like go to like, I think she said like a fucking food like a fruit cleanse or whatever. Yeah. Some fucked up shit coming from a parent. And then he leaves. And then that's what happened. Then he goes sees uh, Lynn and everything. He's doing flashbacks to stuff that the dad is making his daughter Allison do. Yeah. Like, for one, she had to write a fucking letter. Granted, it was weird. I really did like the things he told Lennon to write. That was him reflecting on basically how he understands... How he fucked up. Mm-hmm. How he favored the real Lennon. And kind of lets Allison in the fucking side. Mm-hmm. And he, he admits it. And she wrote it like from the heart in a way. Like like what she thought she was saying. He's like, you can't do that because it sounds like you're sad. It's like, I am sad. And he's like, no, you can't sound sad. Because then people will want to go look for you. They will try to go find you. And so he basically told her to write a fuck you letter to him. So I get props. I mean, if you've seen the episode... The dad is explaining what to write. Like he's tearing up and shit. I mean, mm-hmm. I like his performance. Yeah. Like, really good. The acting is not the problem. The acting is not the problem of the show. And then there's, like, this weird scene of, like, his her dad in the diner. It's the cop from the party that he was talking to whenever everybody's like, we gotta get out of here. Female cop is talking to this older gentleman. Yeah, he's older than her. Because the dad makes a joke about it. Yeah. They're kind of hitting it off with each other, in a way. The dad walks over. Tries to make small talk, pouring off some coffee. He's like, uh, decaf, right? No, he's like, nah, I let my shit load. And then the dad's like, well, I know you do. I'm talking about the female cop. Yeah. And then he makes a a statement about something about work related, like, because she's a cop. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm off the clock. And then it cuts from, I guess, when the diner's closed now. Mm-hmm. And the cop, the lady cop just walks up, smacks the fuck out of him. And like, he, he makes the makes a joke about his hair because, like, it's... Like, like he dyed it. Like and then, like, his shoes are, like, really polished. And then they have this awkward moment. Angry sex. Yeah. The way it starts out, the lady cop starts fucking choking him. He's like, nah, bitch, get the fuck off. And he puts her against the wall. And they start kissing, undressing. And he then, takes his belt off, ties her hands to, the, to this crate. Like, not crate, like this. Like the fucking shelf or yeah. whatever. And then, oh, yeah. And then afterwards, they mention, hey, are you going to tell Lennon about us? He's like, but nah, why? Wow. Uh, and everything, this has been going on for a long fucking time. Yeah. For a long time. And apparently she wanted a relationship at one point. She doesn't now. He kind of wants one. And she's like, no, this works. Like, it's... We just fuck. It's, yeah, we just fuck. It's not like an angry fuck like, hey, you didn't put the dishes away. It was just an odd thing to say. Then he revolted with that. He's like, while she's walking away about to get in her uh, troll car, like, hey, I always put my dishes in the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> like throughout the show there's some random ass dialogue that just yeah. don't make any sense but whatever like I said they keep cutting back to flashbacks to the dad and Allison and he's burying something I don't know what the fuck he's burying it looks like a little suitcase or whatever. whatever 
And he'd put some like stuff in there or whatever, and he'd put a necklace in there. After she drives away, there's a necklace, the exact necklace, sidewalk thing, I don't know what it's called. From here on, on here on out, besides like them doing another flashback and shit, this is my favorite part of the episode. Well, no, Margo calls Johnny. She's wanting him to come by and hang out, and he can't. He has to work. And so she's making jokes or whatever. Like, you, you can come, like, or whatever. Just come hang out or whatever. You can, she's like, I'm sure you can uh, give your boss a reason. And she does, like, a blowjob panama. Pen <laughs> like, the, why you can, like, leave work or whatever. And, like, she's, like, I think she's laying on the grass or whatever. They're FaceTiming each other. He's still driving. He talks about Linda for a second. And then at one point, she just says, uh, what the fuck, Ken? And it cuts to Johnny's face. And I'm assuming, for whatever reason, she hung up right there. And he was going to the gym because I guess he that's where he works. Is like they need to get some stuff done. So he was helping Coach Craft his boyfriend or Eric. And at one point he sees blood dripping down onto the floor. And he goes upstairs and he finds Eric. I don't know how the situation got going because they did not like explain it or whatever. Because after this happens, like there's a little small part of the end and then it, you know it, it's over. He's he's got he's like up under like weights like yeah. he'd been bench pressing. And it's like on his throat. He's bleeding from the mouth. And he's bleeding from the mouth. So maybe like that was okay. Maybe he just like he, he fucked up or something. And like he he's been in the situation, he couldn't get no help because he can't call for it, his throat's crap or whatever. Johnny goes to help him. Well, it's his boyfriend, and apparently they were getting gonna get married. Yeah, because I'm with you, this was my favorite part of the episode. Yeah. So Johnny rushes over there to Eric or Coach Kraft to, to get the weights off of him. Since it's on his throat, the coach can't talk. Like he's but he gives him like eye gestures like, hey. Over there, you know what I'm saying? Like, watch out. And then you see uh, on top of, like, because they're right beside this rail, this mm -hmm. wood rail, and, like, you see screws on top. And that's when I realized, Which like, is Ooh. why where I guess the blood came from. Yeah. I feel like when he walked in, Eric's above him yeah. on this area. Johnny makes the mistake of leaning on the rail and falls. And evidently, there was this, this weight tied onto that rail. And when it fell down, this weight fucking crushed the coach's face. Which I was not expecting that at no. all. Creative. Yeah. Creative. I liked it. I love it. Then Johnny's on the ground. And he, from this fall, he, he's very hurt. It didn't seem like a crazy fall. Like, he fell, like, a story or two stories. But he must have, like, landed on his leg or something. I mean, yeah. He's also bleeding from the mouth and shit. Maybe he broke his leg, landed on his face. Because he couldn't get up. He was yeah. crawling. You hear this door open. Johnny's yelling for help. And you don't see the killer... All you see is a silhouette and a shadow carrying a shovel. He gets hit in the face and it cuts until the next scene. And what happens is, so Allison's driving and she gets a text from that clown person or whatever. And it's like, uh, I'm on my way to get you. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she almost hits this thing. And in the middle of the road is the other part of the goat body from like where the goat head had been cut off or whatever just laying in the road and then she sees something on the side of the road she freaks out and I thought she had texted everybody a video like they made her text a video that's what I thought too yeah. but the video came from Allison and even though Allison's still alive playing Lennon she has Lennon's phone mm -hmm. and all the other shit so she would have different you know, she would have, like, a different name on it. She would just be straight up Allison, because otherwise that's fucking stupid. Every single person gets a video. Uh, you, we cut to Margo, who's doing another fucking... I think she's doing a makeup tutorial. Uh, and she gets the video. Riley. Riley is with Courtney? Which I don't understand. I, don't, never, I didn't understand that. It, it, I think they live together. Because she's always there with Courtney and Kelly. And then you cut to Dylan. Dylan's laying in his bed. He is chill. chilling. And he is in. He looks at the video. And even though I wish they hadn't have done it, I at least like this much better than I like how they did the first episode. They killed Johnny. And it's literally a video. Graphically. Graphic video of somebody decapitating Johnny. With a shovel. And they all freak out exactly like you think they should. Lennon is fucking mortified. Yeah. Not as much as Margo. Margo is screaming her fucking head off, but like she's covering her mouth and like it's 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 muffled, but you can tell she's holding in screams because I feel like if she was screaming full on, she would have worried like the whole yeah. house or whatever. Riley looks at it, obviously affected, but doesn't do anything like crazy. She doesn't like screaming at it. She just puts her phone down next to this bowling pot. I don't know why she had a bowling pot. Dylan had a similar reaction. He just looks at it. 
Like, damn. Goes back to that. Yeah. That's the end of it. One of my pet peeves about this show, only two episodes in, is the callback of how Allison can't drive what the fuck. Mm -hmm. Well, Lennon. Because she's always... She's literally been driving the whole time. Like, she always is looking down at her phone, or she uh, spills her slushy in the fucking window because she's not paying attention to the fucking road. This happens a lot. But overall, yeah, definitely better than the pilot episode. Definitely better. I was actually kind of sad that Johnny died. Yeah. And this one, he seemed like a really cool fucking guy. Yep. I'm getting weird, weird vibes off of um, Dylan still. Yep. Oh, and we see the girl from the first one. We figure out her name's Carla. Who it's, saw everything in the cave. Who apparently lives next door to one of them. Oh, we didn't mention this. I, I don't think. What Dylan was doing with that rebar, he's putting out salt licks. For goats. For goats. Which is supposed to be like a, a red herring. Like, maybe it's Dylan. Yeah. But and, and we, I literally looked at Ray like, it's not fucking Dylan. It's misdirection is what that is. Cause here's another thing when we get that video, why in the fuck would he send it to himself? Getting tired of the flashback scene. A few times to go back to the party again. Yeah, and like I said, I respect it if it's telling us something. But it's not telling us anything new. We know what happened. Yeah, we don't need- well, you can't tell us much more than what already happened. No, that's it. Like I said, it's much better. And if you stuck through it, you, you've seen it, it's so much better than the first episode. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping the third episode's I just want it to be better than the first episode. If everything can be better than the first episode, it's at least decent so far. At least on par with the second episode. Yeah. Once the third, we watch the third episode, we'll go do a review for y'all. As of the time of this recording, there's five episodes out already, so we can try and watch the rest of them. Overall, I'm at least more satisfied with the show than I was originally. Because we didn't like the trailer. No. Think about it. The first episode was just an expansion of the trailer. Yeah. Like you saw basically everything happening in the episode and the trailer besides the reveal. That's a tangent. That's the first episode. If you're watching this one, whenever uh, we put it out, we're usually doing the Chucky episodes like the day after. We'll try to do the I Know What You Did Last Summer just as soon as we get to watch the episodes and we get a chance to review them. Really hope y'all are liking this. Here's to a good third episode. Yeah. Here's hope. All right. Really appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. Till next time. This is Audio. Slam the game is back to your crotch as my crew just might roll on you like